on this computer and we are okay six or uh six five four three Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, uh, March 6th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Please have a nice day, everybody. I'm the Wombat. See? And welcome. It's so much nicer. And with us, and with us today from across the pond, we have uh, John Richards. Welcome. Thank you. Hello. Uh, we also, yeah. Yeah. We also have uh, Gary Smith or Dread Pirate Higgs from up north in the frozen north of uh, Canada. Welcome. And George Brown, the two and a half from East Tennessee. Good, Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, we have a group of over a thousand of us, and we're in the middle of the Bible Belt. So you know there are plenty others around where you are. We'll tell you more about our group after the mid-show break. Well, um, Wombat, what are we going to be talking about this week? We're going to be talking about the power of please and what would change our minds, if anything, if God started using please more. Well, before we get into the meat and potatoes of that topic, let's throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Bob, be me captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through straits of noodliness for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog. My goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life. And I shall dwell in the galley of our club forever. Guys, I'm feeling pretty good. I went to my first disc golf tournament yesterday. Got even on par. I'm really happy with that. Old men throwing cutters, but I feel good. I feel like I had a really fun time outside. It's been so cold and muggy the last couple of weeks. I'm just glad to finally see the, the beginnings of spring come in without the pollen, without the pollen. But it is nice to be out. So, oh, yeah. Round table. I mean, Tennessee is getting really, really nice. I know it's raining in some places mm-hmm. right now, but for the most part, it's getting really, really nice. John Richards, what's it like up there across the pond? How, how, how are you uh, enjoying the now, hopefully, turning weather for the better? We've is- got swathes of daffodils everywhere. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. It's sunny out here right now. It looks a bit like my picture. Good. Yeah. Okay, okay. So the tourists actually were like, man, we were lucky. We got that one week of good weather in England. It's not no, like- no, this is a myth. This is a, a malicious myth put, put about by Hollywood who to portray Britain as being a foggy place and okay. always rain, raining. It's not true. It's just, not true. <laughs> no, no, just, just look at the meteorological statistics. Yeah. and Look at the picture behind you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, well, there you go. And John New York... Richards- President of Atheism UK also saying, don't trust the media. I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, okay. I'm saying don't trust Hollywood because uh, <laughs> not all the media, but if you look at the stats, you'll see that New York has got a far rainier, wetter mm. and more extreme climate than London. Okay. 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 Shots, New York. Shots, New York and California. Coast to coast, coast to coast. Oh, okay. No, no, Cal- California is pretty balmy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary, it's good to see you. By the way, really, really nice oh. jacket. How you been? Uh, I've been well. I uh, I am back from my uh, from my uh, sojourn up north. Right. And uh, yeah, I've been out. To actually, I recently set up a wood shop. I've I've got a couple of wood lays. Um, so my mentor has been uh, showing me the ropes and. Um, making a in the process of making my very first bowl oh 
maplewood bowl so okay um, once that's done I'll, I'll i'll show you guys next week are you doing like laminate layers or is it one no. block that you're just carving into yeah just one ah, one block one solid okay. piece of maple okay. and it's got some really nice uh really nice patterning in it yeah. So, so I remember when I took my first welding class, the funnest thing that we ever made was a box. You had like a couple of panels and you had to weld them all together and you had to hold water. Yeah. The thing that you made had to hold water for a half hour. And I remember making it for the first time and the, it sprung leaks left and right. It was more of a sieve, <laughs> if anything. But the second time I'm just there watching it for a full half hour, it's like, don't drip, don't drip. So yeah, the, the idea of making things out of wood, making things out of the earth it's just a really fun process to learn and and really respect the the quality craftsmanship that go in a lot of things we take for granted yeah, mm. yeah. well you could have called yours a colander right because true, water true, drips true. out of it right mm -hmm. i mean if anything it makes you appreciate the grand designer anymore anyway larry <laughs> how have you been how's life man oh doing fine uh work a day world anymore just um playing games on evenings and weekends watching tv I, as an old guy i don't get out a whole lot but uh life's good have you heard of a game called elden ring it's kind of like going crazy right now by any chance mm, i've heard of it but i haven't played it okay I've been playing okay. uh skyrim a lot on, on quest 2 okay then you got plenty uh, of virtual. virtual yeah elden ring just like skyrim just way harder way 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 harder may not even mm. be worth your time based on how hard i it don't is. need it harder <laughs> <laughs> and i'm playing skyrim on easy harder is not gratifying <laughs> yeah no. yeah yeah yeah. some it's people like hitting fun. the wall yeah i realize i like as the older i get the more and the more jobs i have the the more i want to to have easier things in my life mm. anyway yeah. uh, when you're enjoying it yeah all right we're going to take a gamble today george he's he, how are you feeling george what's going on with you in the interest of being brief, I'll say, good, let's move on. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thanks for the setup for the great transition. Anyway, so what we're <laughs> going to do now is uh, I'm going to play in my head and say to myself, you know, George, it's so hard to take umbrage against that without you saying please, because I feel like there's <laughs> power in the, I feel like there's power in being polite. And if some people would just take the moment to just show a little bit of charitability, a Especially. little bit of humbleness, just to be a bit polite and not make it so much of a commandment, but more of just an offering, maybe mm -hmm. I'd more acquiesce to a, a personality of that, regardless of whatever they were telling Especially me. Especially supreme beings, huh? Especially mm -hmm. supreme beings. So what I wanted to talk about today was the power of please, particularly coming from God. Because one thing you don't hear a lot from God, I think we can go through the Bible and actually see this as like a, a word search. If we looked for a number of times <clears> God <throat> has said, please, it might be zero. <laughs> it might just be straight out zero. However, 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 what if he just said, please more? And how would atheists react to it as a result? And so what I wanted to do was a roundtable discussion with the people here, where we take a, a classic commandment or a classic phrase from God, put please at the front and see how we would feel if he was just a bit more polite, would that even make us persuaded? I think in some cases we would, and I think in other cases we wouldn't. Let's see. John Richards, I want to throw out the first one to you, okay? So you know, you, go for it, go for it, go for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of please because I, I've raised about five children. I say about because, you know, some of them have left. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're producing grandkids. But I'm very much in favor of please. I get to the stage where if they don't say please, I don't do what they want. Mm -hmm. And eventually they, they twig and then I do what they want. And I say, do you know why I did that? And they say, because I said, please, nice. it's, it's so important. But, do you know, even if God said, please, before kill your son, Isaac, <laughs> I wouldn't be persuaded. OK, OK, so we have a line in the sand. It's good. How about this, though? He also says honor your mother and father such that your days may be long on the earth. What if he said, please honor your mother and father? John Richards, as a, as a parent yourself, how do you feel about that? Would that make you feel any better? Well, I, I think this is, this is such an important rule that it, it doesn't really need please. You know, it's, it's just a, a way of respecting the generation that produced you. Okay. I think, Larry, what do you think about the idea of honor your mother and father with please or without please? Would it change how you feel about it in any way? You're also a dad. I'll oh, sure. I, I would think so. Um, I, you want another example? I would be, please don't eat the fruit of the tree. 
That would you be guys nice. both have interesting takes on this because I wouldn't automatically be, I wouldn't honor a mother or father based on a commandment. Like for me, and and well, Dred, feel it, free to counter this. It or, or tends like. to make you rebel against it just simply because it's a command. Sure, well, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I would counter well, that, uh, you know, honoring your mother and father um, is it, it shouldn't be by fiat, right? It, it should be that they've, you know, done and acted in a way that is suitable for a parent yeah, to act. Sure. Um, you know, there's lots of parents out there that unfortunately uh, are either abusive or neglectful of their children. And uh, in those cases, I wouldn't think that they deserve being honored by their children. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's also right. people who mm -hmm. just don't know who their parents are. Maybe, they, you know, there's a number of circumstances. If I don't know, and I have maybe different sort of parents, or I just didn't need them, or I had one parent, or, you know, it's an orphan, and you just graduate out of that system. But like, either or way, foster parents, yeah. foster parent, or maybe you're a, a sperm bank baby. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but maybe you don't know your dad is. Should you mm -hmm. uh, go out of your way to find him and honor him? Or sh should you just appreciate the mom that you had and, and just move forward with that? I think, I think honor should be one of the things like respect where it's, it's earned and you give it as in, mm. at where it's deserving, whether sure. it's asked for or not by a complete third party. Dread, what do you think? I, I, I just wonder if uh, we might introduce our, uh, our latest uh, addition here, Swedish Steve. Swedish Steve came on, welcome. Uh, hey, thank you, Steve. thank you. Hey boys. Hey. Hi, Hi Steve. Swedish oh, Steve. Hi, oh, Steve. Hey, George. Hey, John. I happen to know that you're recently a parent, right? Um, I yeah. am. Little girl or little boy? Which one was it? Um, I wanted a little girl, so of course it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so that's good for you. You're, yeah, you're, quite, <laughs> you're quite in luck. I am doing, uh, so what we're asking today is, uh, in the Bible, it does say two things. One, kill your son, Isaac, which, which is kind of rough, right? But yeah. he said, please kill your son, Isaac. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe there would at least be some hesitancy there. But the idea of honoring your mother and father as a commandment, whether or not you <clears throat> say, please, for me, feels the it does it's immaterial because i still feel like that is something that needs to be deserved by the parent but as a new parent what do you think do you feel like the amount of work that you've done so far has made it that you deserve to be honored by you know, no 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 it's uh, you, you can't uh, say that it's something good to take care of your baby mm. it's it, it's it's natural it would be unnatural not to take care of the baby so um, that doesn't give me any, how you say, credits, good credits from the baby and, and uh, is deserving his respect when he gets old enough to stop drooling and maybe think. Mm -hmm. I like, mm -hmm. like the expectation is if you're going to have kids, take care of them, right? Like yeah. You, you yeah, don't get right. extra points because you, you want also some respect out of it because I took care of it. It's like, no, that was your job when you had me. Yeah, that, that would in fact be what God does, right? Because he creates his <laughs> beings and then he demands respect and love and worship yeah. and all the rest yeah. of it. Exactly. Yeah. Please. But if he said, please, it doesn't change it. John Richards, yeah. have we have we convinced you or, or are we still off? What do you think? Well, I'm with you in that I don't think it's really a case for pleading. We've mm. in this country, we've just jailed some abusive parents who's, who were responsible for the death of a two year old. Right. And sorry, this is so dark, but there, there was some video shown of the mother recording the two year old and trying to get that baby to say it loves the mother. And it's right. very reluctant to. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't I don't think any amount of pleading is appropriate in, in that case. Mm. Like, right. um, like, like Steve said, this is a duty rather than rather right. than rather than a choice mm -hmm. george how do you feel do you feel like you had a duty to raise your kids or do you want some special recognition for it um i don't want any special recognition for it and i think we have a duty if we are suitable parents which a lot of people are not and should not have children in the first place but if mm -hmm. we are suitable parents 
we have a duty to be nurturing and never to be abusive to our children. Mm, I agree. Mm -hmm. So whether God says whether whether God says please or not is irrelevant because the man behaves just like Vladimir Putin or Donald Trump. That's I mean honestly, if we're going to really consider it, that's a compliment considering how crazy God is in the Bible. <laughs> Like, yes. I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. not much comparison of guy who drowns the world in chapter one, and then <laughs> it's like, "There's wait, the rest of the book keeps going." It's like, "Yeah, it keeps going. It gets better. It gets better." Yeah, it's a really nice turnaround. He starts perfect, does, and, and it's great. Um, well, would it would it point, have man. made it any better if he if he'd said, "Please, can I drown the world?" Apart from yeah. knowing, technically, he asked Moses to say it for him, so I guess it's okay. I, I who knows, who knows. Though I will throw this at this next one. Um, one of the weirdest commandments that I had, I, I had seen that I never really understood very well, was the, keeping the Sabbath holy. Have you guys ever heard of that Sabbath? So for some reason, some people say Sabbath is Saturday, which I think makes sense based on a Georgian calendar. Yet a lot of people just go to church on Sunday and we'll call that Sabbath. And wow. I've and I'm I've always been confused how we haven't even gone the day the right time like sabado saturday it's like no 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 it's sunday so my main thing was well how do you keep the sabbath holy when i was a christian and i and i found various different levels of uh of of you know respect for it some people don't even get well some people don't even leave their homes some people don't tie knots some people will say they don't listen to music other people will say they don't eat certain kinds of food there's very unclear rules about it and even in the bible it's like well i'll only burn my goats at at this temperature, <laughs> the other ones, it's very bizarre. However, if you got a clear list of instructions on how to keep the, the, the day holy, maybe I'd acquiesce to it more, at least if it was more consistent. But if you just told me, please, maybe I'd go out of my way and do it. What do you think? John Richards, would you keep the holy day Sabbath if God was like, listen, this is what you got to do. Could you please do this on every Saturday? Could you please do it? Am I, am I harming you or harming you in any way? Please, please, I'm asking you. We've had a history of fighting to get the Sabbath treated as a normal day of the week over here. Wow. Which day is it for you guys? It's Sunday for us. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's confusing, as you say, because, of mm -hmm. course, for the Muslims, it's Friday. For the Jews, I think George will tell us it's Saturday. Mm -hmm. And for the Christians, it's Sunday. So there's no agreement there at all, which pokes a hole in the whole argument, I should think. Yeah. But, Past but, uh, Pastafarians celebrate on Friday as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's well, it's, a, it's a very good day for a, a barbecue isn't it let's face it in the end and of pasta yeah yeah, yeah the, the end of the week yes <laughs> so w when i was when i was young when i was the age of somebody like say george hmm. i used to um i used not to be able to do anything <laughs> on a sunday because it, it really was shut down no shops open wow you had to go if you were of a church going mind you that's when you went uh, and the the pubs weren't were the pubs open i can't remember but it, certainly in ireland you couldn't go you couldn't get a drink on a sunday wow so we were we were pretty much sabbath right up <laughs> although over the last 50 years gradually we've become de-sabbathed right. apart from of course apart from of course black sabbath which has had a good career in the meantime <laughs> So even in Tennessee, you can't order alcohol in the evenings on a Sunday, I believe. Is that right, Larry? Can you, is that accurate? In Tennessee and Kentucky, you can't get like alcohol. No, it's it's all around the county or the God. city uh, laws. It's not uh, state laws. Okay. But there are Fair cities enough. that have blue laws that says you can't order alcohol or get alcohol at all during sun, usually Sunday. So what no. you do there is you just drive outside city limits. Anyway, it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, outside city limits is the county, and they're usually worse. <laughs> so we're All looking right. at two things. It's a huge inconsistency, but also there's no pleas in front of it. So, John, you said you were working to get rid of it. If the rules are just more consistent and, and they were given to you by a very polite God, would you be more inclined to follow them at that point? No, I think the trend is in the opposite direction. We're, we're increasingly heathen over here. Mm. So, I, I, no amount of please is going to turn the clock back. Fred, I'm going to put you on the on the hot seat. Has the sure. Pasiferian God, the great noodley Nord himself, ever mm -hmm. said please? And with respect to the celebrating Friday, um, 
Well, he's he's so drunk he he, he can't even <laughs> articulate that. Uh, I mean, Friday's his day, and you know he's taking mm-hmm. a break, and he's just you know he's 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 sitting at the beer volcano and uh, yeah. you know drinking grog. That, that, if so anything, I love that it's way more consistent. It's just like, hey, it's Friday, have a good have a chill day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you got to work, you got to work. Exactly. But if, if you I'm did, not telling you not to do exactly. anything. If you did try to say it, it would come out as please. Sweetest Steve, uh, not to put Sweden on the chopping block, but state church does. Is there any sort of like formally recognized day of the week that is sort of like lower key in terms of like what businesses are in operation? And no, no, not because of uh, religious bullshit. Um, It's okay. Keep going. Yeah. Well, uh, there is the ceremonies on Sunday, but uh, maybe 15 people are, are there in a, in a big town. Mm. Now, here's this. So let's say we can make Sunday uh, the, the day that we have um, our, our, our holy Sabbath day. And God comes to you and is like, hey, listen, can you please just do X, Y, Z things. I would really appreciate it as your Lord and Savior. Thank you so much if you can do this. Wouldn't this be great? All right, see you. Would you be more inclined at that point? He's like, oh, he, well, I mean, he he talked to me. He asked me, please. He gave me a gift no. basket <laughs> <laughs> of unleavened no, bread. No, it, it wouldn't work. Like uh, half the population is so high, hangover on Sunday. So. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice. I'm going to come to place Sweden. To it's a good place. Yeah. Go ahead, Larry. I was just thinking, if he actually did come to me and say, please, right. then at least it would approve his existence. Right. I would no longer be an atheist. Yeah. Right. But, um, it goes without saying. But it would, it, would, it would make me tend to go along further with what he requests okay. than if he commanded it. But at the same time, I would never reach the level of worship. I don't believe that worship is a good practice of anything. Larry, I think that's a good point you made because one, it is good if you could come down and just say, hey, I am here. Please do this. I would appreciate it. That would clear up everything. No more atheists in the world. Incredible, huge. And then a little please on top. It's like, oh, okay. Okay. What does he got to say? Still not killing my son. Thank you very much. Uh So yeah, like I'm not an atheist anymore, but I'm not digging the, if I'm, I'm not a Christian by default because I'm not worshiping that God. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. But I'm thinking that his reputation is so poor, really. Hmm. So, <clears throat> trying, to to get, get... Uh, trying to get Isaac killed and, uh, yeah. and, and genocide of all the, by drowning of the entire population of the planet, yeah. apart from Noah's family. I think just requiring him to say please is not enough. I want <laughs> to him to be really humble. I want him to say, please, on his knees. Oh, no. I was going to say pretty please. I, I didn't know you were going to go that far. There's limits. With, with sugar on top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, th- I, think, I, think God, I think God is incorrigible. You know, a gift basket goes a long way. And I feel like if you just send everybody a <laughs> heavenly gift basket, we'd all be great. Though, yeah. George, uh, John brings up a good question. Uh, God's reputation seems to be in the trash, at least among atheists. Like, what would it take for you to be more inclined to follow this being? And would please help? I, I, I just put the mofo in jail <laughs> for eternity. <laughs> just lock them. Go on ahead, George. It sounds like you want to ask something else. Go for it. I forgot what I was going to say. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You, I, I thought I got to you just as you were raising your hand. It's totally fine. Hey, Larry, we're at the bottom. Yeah, of the I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, we're at the bottom of the half hour when we come back to this, and you can take us out. Well, sure. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Be sure to stay tuned for the next half. And after this break, we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a minute to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. 
ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now. ASK has over a thousand members when we have weekly in-person meetings at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria every Wednesday night starting after work around 5.30. Look for us inside. Uh, did I say Wednesday? It's Tuesday, Tuesday night. Uh, look for us inside at the high top table. Um, we could be out on the deck though. The weather's getting to be so pretty. We're usually the loudest and happiest group. We also have Tuesday night evening uh, Zoom meetups. If you'd like to join us, if you don't live in Knoxville or we'd just like to stay at home rather than get out during this COVID, uh, just send us an email at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll send you information about how you can join us. Uh, you can find ASK online on Facebook, Meetup, or knoxvilleatheist.org. You can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. One bad word we want to pick up. We're going to go to current events. John Richards, you got your finger on the pulse of the world. I heard everything in outside of USA around the world is is perfectly happy and, and wonderful. What's going on? No, it's not. No. Oh man, <laughs> this this is going to be a bit darker than the usual mood we have in our podcasts, but uh, we can't ignore what's been happening in Ukraine, and it particularly as it does have a religious connotation, since back in the USSR days religions were banned and a lot of churches were destroyed. But since Putin got into power, he has rebuilt the churches. He's built a splendid new cathedral in Moscow and all at public expense. And so the leaders of the Christian church, Christian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, not Greek, are beholden to him. So they pretty much agree with everything he says. And he wants to come across as a man of faith. So he tells a story of how his mother gave him a cross that he wears now round his neck and has never taken it off. So particularly because back in the pre-USSR days, the Orthodox Church had a wider boundary than current Russia. He is now using that to justify his we call it invasion, he would call it recovering the lost lands that they ought to still own. The Russian Crusades? It, it sort of, yeah. So I don't think we, I think we should express some opinions about what's going on here. Obviously we're not gonna be able to solve it. Right. But, uh, but also like, uh, just, to, just throw my thoughts on this, I was saying like um, the pervasiveness of the church is always been, a political tool when used by very large governments. And it's mm -hmm. not a new thing that we're seeing going on. It's not a new thing back in the medieval times. It's not a good, it's not a new thing since before we even, Zoas, I'm sure there was some sort of shaman who used it as a way to get people to group up against the people who didn't believe that that shaman had powers. Yeah. But it's really unfortunate when it's a pool of people, in my opinion, who aren't educated or told or, or deliberately misinformed and are taught very poor forms of reason. And then those people who lead those groups can easily manipulate them to, to giving money or fighting for or dedicating hatred or changing their culture against certain groups of people. And I found that to just be a really terrible yet pervasive tool that we still find ourselves culpable to and, and vulnerable to, you know, moving forward. That's my take. Dred? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, as I mentioned, um, Canada has its own state religion, that's by virtue of the Queen as head of state, and she's, you know, head of the church and mm. uh, monarchs rule by divine right. So um, that's a lot of push that we get from as pastafarians uh, in, you know, moving, move, advancing our, um, our interests is the pushback from uh, the, the Christians under um, under the monarch, 
uh, it'd be nice to uh, fight that fight uh, once I get my driver's license with my tricorn on. The next step is to uh, get the queen out. You know, uh, do yeah. like Barbados did, and uh, I, I, I don't, I can't remember what the word is. Is it secede from the Commonwealth? Um, to you know, extract ourselves uh, from. I see it as you guys kicking rule. out, kicking out the the, the crown. Yeah, 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 Eviction. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, evict. Yes, it'd evict. be for the better. Well, you know, and it you, you kind of see that a bit in the royal family where there's a dissent amongst the uh, children or grandchildren. Um, they just don't want to participate in the, in this uh, charade anymore. And, um, you know, it's high time that uh, we get rid of this thing right across the board where state religions are. Uh, hold far too much sway and are used for nefarious purposes. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask Swedish Steve, you have a state religion there, I believe. Uh, how much sway does it hold in your society? Uh, nothing. Uh, None? None. Except yeah, yeah, that you, you pay taxes to support it, is that correct? If you're a member, you will pay yeah. short okay. taxes. So that's um, one step ahead of Canada. Um, and that their taxes go to support it, whether they want it or not. Yeah. Not to poke Swedish Steve so much, but if you're in Sweden, you're going to pay taxes regardless. You, yeah. I think you have, you're going to pay taxes even if you have a TV in your home. There's a TV tax. Did you know about that? Yeah, later? but it won't go to the church. That was the point. We were making. No, it, it goes to the public. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I've never got this. I pay 37, I think 38 percentage in tax mm. on my income no uh, yeah do Is you get free university free university free health care free medicine sweet uh, and, and nobody sleeps on the street no. you got you got a spare room there uh, sweet steve i'm moving over yeah come don't on move over. don't move there right now it's probably really dark out we give it a couple of months <laughs> you're gonna go up there but uh, going back to what John was talking about, like what we're seeing with Putin right now and the playbook he's following is the same playbook that we've seen from a number of narcissists and, and, and dictators in the past where they use the arm of the church that, ha that they have a, a, a hand in their pocket and the church doesn't want to lose their, the influence of a great you know, position, uh, position of power. So they mm -hmm. will purposely do harmful things to, to other people or their own culture. And I feel like, Narcissists don't care either way. And so I'm going to go to our own resident expert on narcissists, George Brown. Tell me about, tell me about narcissism and Putin. Where do you see like the lines? In well, I, I'm not going to address <laughs> not to, narcissism. Not to medically diagnose anybody on the radio, but I think it's fairly, you know, my the, the, guy, the guy's a book, the guy's a bully. Mm. And, um, and I think there's an element of sadism there, mm. but um, what I'm, when I'm thinking about the Ukraine, I want to share with you all is um, that there is a heady stench tradition of um, what's called pogroms in Russia, which means, hey, let's round up all the Jews and have a little barbecue, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it, sort, of, sort of a sanctioned um, murdering of the local populace. And, and, um, so the, I, I find a religious component to this, what's going on. Oh, yeah, exactly. The, the, um, I, I just want to share that uh, one of my relatives left the Ukraine. I mean, his family left the Ukraine many, many years ago because of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. The president of the Ukraine is Jewish. Mm. Times have changed. Yes, absolutely. And, absolutely. and um, so... I can't help but thinking that part of trying to bomb the Ukraines into the Stone Age right now it has a religious tinge to it. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I'm feeling like um, the Crusades are, are sort of happening in a hmm. way. You know, it's like, well, let this, let's get those people, you know, th those horrible people who are threatening us. Hmm. Remember that. They're laying John. that on, on, on them too. And so that's, that's about all I have to say. I, I'm, I feel really sad for the people. Yeah, that's a great angle. And I feel, I feel terrible, gutted. John, what do you think? 
I saw your hand. Well, like you said, like, uh, Ty, you either make a, a, an, an enemy of a mm -hmm. church, if you're a politician, mm -hmm. and that, that's a, that, of course, is what the USSR did. They, they looked at the church, Stalin looked at the church and said, this is a rival <clears throat> authority, I want to stomp on it. Mm. And what Putin has done is the opposite. He said, I want to encourage this, because I'm a bit weak at the beginning of my term of office, and I want to encourage this as an ally. So he's made the church indebted to him for causing it to regrow. Right. And as a result of which, right up until yesterday, the, the biggest leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill, wasn't condemning Putin's invasion of Ukraine. He was just keeping a low profile and saying nice things as, as you know, Putin would have imagined. And it was only in the last 24 hours that he actually came out and said, hey, this is not Christian. Mm. I hear well, I <clears throat> that. That's interesting, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> these things become wars of righteousness, right? Mm. Because he, it's not like he's going after a, an obvious source of oil like Saddam Hussein did in Kuwait, you know? He's, um, he's just flexing because of, his, you know, because he's clearly a narcissist, but, um, you know, it becomes, a, it becomes a war of righteousness as opposed to a war of something. You know what I mean? Not to get too much- That's what it topic. appears to me. But also Ukraine does have oil, but it's not Russian. Well, but yeah, but it, that's not that's not right. their justification. Right. There you go. That's, yeah. that's absolutely true. He's never said, I'm going in there for the free energy and natural resources. Right. He's made it a, a, a thing about um, righteousness and morality and his intent and his his duty to, to make this country one again, to make Russia yeah. strong. But it's yeah. it's at the expense of lives of civilians and, and terrible. Things. There's there's a really interesting book uh, that's been written. I, and I'll, I'm sorry, I'm remiss uh, as to the author, um, but she has uh, researched the justifications of war uh, from all the wars that have happened in the world since 1928, when when war was outlawed, uh, war became illegal. Um, of course, you've got the Second World War and all the other wars that uh, subsequently followed. But as a as a way to get around that bit of it being illegal, uh, leaders have had to write justifications why right. they're going to war. Right. So it would be very interesting to see what Putin's is. I, mm. I haven't looked it up, but I'm sure there's one there that okay. he's uh, dictated to somebody to... Uh, you know, use as a justification for what he's doing. George, yeah. get in here. Oh, go, go. Sweden, Steve, do you have a comments on that? Go for it. Yeah, yeah. The justification at the moment is uh, he is denazification uh, and uh, stopping the Ukrainian genocide on Russian people. Which is nonsense, of course. It really yeah, is. It, it really it is. is. But it, it's the public. Um, Justification that is given. Oh, okay. Line. I I want to make a comment, if I may. Go for it, George. Um, the history of Russia is one of continuous uh, um, autocratic rule. Un it's an unbroken chain. So through the communist years, you had strongmen dictators following the strongmen kings. And there is a there is a component what we're discussing. There's a component of divine right. Mm. You know that that Putin, in, in other words, Putin, let's say maybe have having been anointed by the church, is is um, is chosen in a way by God to rule this empire. Mm. Not have they always done that in the past. Not That's to why make light, I don't want to make light. The kings. Not to make light of the situation going on, but I I felt like the red flags. I know we made war illegal, but I feel like the red flag should be if your government leader ever takes a picture of himself on the back of a horse with his shirt off, with with his a shirt rifle, off. <laughs> fire that guy as soon yes. as you possibly can, because that should yeah. be illegal. Because that's a red yeah. flag. 
those are the red flags, guys. Because flag. yeah. we don't have a lot of heads of states doing yeah. that. <laughs> we, don't need, we don't need that I'm at the PR. More and more concerned about uh, the stories I hear about Putin isolating himself. Mm, yeah, um, that's you know that's a that's a psychosis uh, or an entry point in psychosis to me. Not and only that, I but... really worry about that if he's if he ever thinks about trying to use nuclear weapons there's nobody around right. him to tell absolutely. him not to yeah yeah right absolutely back in the end of the second world war that's what hitler did yep. he, yeah. he didn't come out of his bunker for months in in 43 44 because uh, he was he he was losing it right <laughs> not right. only not only in the sense of the war but in the sense of his marbles right it's what they forcibly did in napoleon like you take any like very <clears throat> strong person either as a punishment or as they become to the point where they lose themselves they isolate and i find mm -hmm. that from, from an epistemological <clears throat> point of view it's because they don't want to deal with outside criticism on mm. on their actions because they have no capability of dealing with it mm. and and they don't have a method where they are interested in refining a process it just has to be the way it is because they mm. don't have room for doubt anymore because mm -hmm. confidence is brittle yeah. and the more you stack on confidence the less you want doubt to come and knock over that tower so you mm. try to keep yourself isolated away from anyone who can question you and unfortunately we interpret that sometimes as an audience as someone actually being right because we tend to look at very confident people who are in positions of power and say that person must be doing something right i'm going to follow whatever that person says and so yeah. putin wouldn't uh, i don't want to put this i don't want to put this i don't want to say this too bad but we tend to give up power when we don't have to and i feel like that's one of the biggest mistakes we do as a people and when we find someone who's very powerful we often give up our own power to them and i feel like if we ask ourselves why we do that and should we and 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 see what what happened if we all choose not to i think we'd see incredible things as a country a uh, world really dread what do you think it's it's a and it's also about being able to uh, assess the capabilities hmm. of the people that we would put into positions of power. If you're not a critical thinker, your criteria uh, for evaluating their competence right. is probably pretty rough. Um, right. You know, and certainly lots of people get in by virtue of their looks and their wealth and um, other, other sort of uh, very base traits um, outside of you know, uh, a, a sound reasoner, uh, a good thinker, <laughs> you know, right. um, that's, that's where the focus ought to be when we're picking our candidates, um, as opposed to how nice their suit is or what kind of shoes they're wearing. Mm. I well, also I was say, go for it, George. I was going to say, it, give, give me a chance. I'm going to vote for a comedian in the future. But then I realized not a comedian, not a joke. There's a difference. Exactly. There's such a yes. subtle yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. We've There's already a lot of got funny a... people who shouldn't be in office. <laughs> We've got a joke. We've already got a joke. Yeah. yeah. What we want is a skilled comedian. Hey, hey we've been there too. <laughs> I feel yeah, yes. Honestly, yes. I mean, I do feel like there could I feel like the religious card was played a lot in this current war that we're we're looking at. Yeah. Because it is sure. easy to look at Ukraine if you're Russia and be like, oh, there's a lot of Jews there, Jewish president. Hey easy 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 right as far as like because there are people in russia who are completely for the war that's going on but i also have sympathies for the people who are completely against it and i feel like a system where where there's that much dissent the only thing they can do is go out in the streets and and protest there's a problem with the the structure of the political system there should be better representation than that than mm -hmm. just go to that street and yell meanwhile we will authorize this war uh, as the mm -hmm. other side um any final thoughts? What do you guys think? <laughs> John, what do you think? Your topic. Well, I wondered if uh, Swedish Steve has got any more to say because Finland, with the border to Russia, they're rethinking their policy because they've been quite um, non-military. And now they're thinking right. maybe they're next in line after Ukraine. If if Putin succeeds, mm. I don't think I don't think Sweden has a border with uh, with Russia, but it it would be next but one in line. Yeah, but we have uh, special defense for um, 
Russian submarines, for example. We have signs in the oceans um, that says this way if you're gay. And I'm, I'm sure that the Russians won't be able to cross those lines as uh, it's illegal to be gay in Russia. So mm. wow. now, for, for serious, it's, we can't do sh nothing. Finland can't do nothing. It's just come in and we have an old joke in Sweden that's, well, when Russia has taken over Sweden, uh, they will um, defend it. And that makes me feel very safe. Hmm. Friends. Yeah, I, I forget. It's totally fine. <laughs> so John Richards, I think you make um, a really great point that we can look as bystanders at Ukraine. And even if we're the most empathetic, ap apathetic person, we'll be like, oh, well, that's a shame. Meanwhile, I got to do my own thing. That attitude, that mindset is coming for you eventually. Because yeah, yeah. tyranny like that doesn't get satiated if it ha has a victory. It's the only way you get rid of tyranny like that is by eliminating tyranny, mm, right? Mm. And so if Ukraine's next and they fall, and I don't think they will, but if they do, don't think it stops there. It's going to be maybe Poland, it'll be maybe Belarus next, it'll, it'll keep tiding its way over. Yeah. And when we see through history is every single time we've turned our backs or looked away from situations like that, it eventually got you too. It eventually got them too. Yeah. And pulls we more seem and to more be more in more. the appeasement stage, right? Uh, like, like England was during World War II at the start of World War II, when uh, Germany invaded Poland, you know, they, they, you know, we can get along with them, we can work with Hitler. Uh, but then of course right. Hitler didn't work with anybody. Right. Yeah. Right. right. I, I understand. To be honest with you, but yeah. Yeah. Sorry, did, did Switzerland uh, take a stand um, against um, Today. this invasion? Today, mm. Switzerland has. Yeah, Switzerland right. yeah. is altering yeah, yeah. its perpetual neutrality. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, I thought that was pretty significant when I heard that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't had a chance to research it to right. see what, what that actually meant. But yeah, um, yeah that's interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, I remember hearing a story about, uh, you know, um, a, a person uh, learning that uh, one group had had been attacked by the government or was being targeted by the government and he says well you know it's it's not me i don't have to worry right. about it and then another group and then another group and then another group and then finally it was him and he said why won't anyone help me and it's because there was no one left no one left correct right correct yeah. correct it's a great parable um yeah. and and uh if anything not pay attention to, to this like i it's so easy to not pay attention to this because it's happening so far away maybe you don't even know any ukrainians keep this in your foresight because you need to in my head yes we've had a terrible pandemic yes yes we've had uh, uh an issue where a lot of race relations have come to light and they were always there for some people like i've always seen them but i'm glad other people are seeing them i'm glad the reaction is "Ooh, that's bad good pay attention to those Yes, a lot of abuse in work and jobs and relationships between women and men and, and offices are completely unbalanced and in some way it's predatory and dangerous for women to work in those spaces. Yeah, keep paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. The thing that's going on with your cane that will be hopefully resolved, but there may be another incident where you feel like your empathy is getting like exhausted. I say, keep working on it because we need to be more empathetic as a country and we shouldn't mm -hmm. be to the point where we turn ourselves off on stories that make us feel uncomfortable. Like that discomfort is a good sign that you have that humanity left in you. So yeah. don't turn mm -hmm. away from that. And I say, if you can, I, this is not a call to action, but uh, <laughs> my small little nitpick, and this will be part of my final word is, if you donate to the Ukraine Red Cross for this particular issue, because we, that, that does need support, be wary of what centers you go or what websites you use to donate the money, because some are religiously based and I won't name names, but right. look for crosses and look for religious names in the, in the donation group because right. they don't report where the money goes. Right. And right. often or not, they take a fraction of that off. And then if any, give away to the proper right. donation groups, which is right. Ukrainian mm. Red Cross. Find them on right. YouTube, Google. It's a very easy search. But Ukrainian and, Red and, Cross. And, and stay away from a religious army that uh, <laughs> supports, um, yeah. 
you know the you know the one I mean. Salvation <laughs> Army. <laughs> yeah. I'll name it. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, if you want the Salvation Army. Yeah, ah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But um uh and you know, a lot can be said for, you know, I mean, because there's a lot of systemic uh, racism, for instance, or uh, sexism. Yeah. But uh, what it really boils down to is systemic bigotry. Mm. Um, and, and that's the, because that kind of encapsulates every kind of uh, prejudice and bias that, that people may hold. And that's uh, what we need to address. I'll meet you one layer lower, systemic ignorance, right? Because Perfect. you can, you can yes. easily take the most racist person, take them to like a university and tell them learn stuff. And mm -hmm. when they're surrounded by a group of people who are different from them, when they're learning from people who look different from them, when they're constantly yep. exposed to different cultures, all that stuff leaves. And they leave yep. some of the most enlightened people willing to contribute oh. to society. I was so religious when I was in college. By the time I got out of there, I was like, whoa, you would hate me, Dred. <laughs> if you met me in high school, you would hate me. You'd be like, ah, oh, Tyra, I can't, can't deal with that guy. Anyway, right. but yeah, systemic <laughs> ignorance. Let's fight it. One of the best ways to do it is ask questions. Right. And we're mm -hmm. really good at doing that. All right round table we got nine minutes we got time sweetest steve anything you'd recommend we check out before next week please tell me i'm not commanding you <laughs> okay <laughs> um no okay okay works for me works for me works for me keep being yeah. a dad man it's it, i heard it's i heard it's difficult i heard it's difficult no. george brown do you have anything you'd recommend before next week well as usual i think it would be good for us all to be conscious of cluster B personality disorders mm -hmm. and uh, really get familiar with them and, and um, be aware of nice. the rising tide of bullyism and the mm -hmm. forms that it takes in our societies. Bullyism. I'm saying it. plural in our societies. Yeah. You know, think about the, um, the goodies that people get from bullying other people. I like it. I like and it. And how are we going to deal with this going Georgia, forward? Georgia, I also like your strategy in the sense of always have a B plan, regardless of whatever platform or brand you like, always have something different where if A starts doing terrible things and thinking they can get away with it, you can immediately switch to B or something else. As Is that my strategy? That's a good strategy. <laughs> hey, we can talk about that offline. But no, yeah, I, have, I, I don't remember say, saying anything like that. Oh, that's your whole anything. vibe. Your, your, whole, your whole vibe is, hey, you, got, you need options. And I love it. I love it. Uh, John Richards, mm -hmm. I heard you got a YouTube thing. Uh, you just started it. What's going on with that? <laughs> no, I haven't just started it. I, I've been YouTubing now for a couple of years or more. Can't remember when I started. But I want to pick up on what you said about uh, donations to reliable charities, Ty, yes. because uh, yesterday I interviewed for my Free Thought Hour show uh, a lovely guy, Kurt Lewis, who is, he does his work for the International Rescue Committee. He's based in Sacramento, but International Rescue is all over the world. It was set up in 1948 at the suggestion of Einstein, Albert Einstein, to help to place refugees. And we hear that there's 1.5 million people currently trying to get out of, well, have, have got out of Ukraine and more wanting to get out of Ukraine. So there's going to be a lot of refugees. So I'd like to recommend that on that list of good charities we mm. put International Rescue Committee. It's led by President and CEO David Miliband, who was nearly the leader of the Labour Party following Gordon Brown and might have given them, the Labour Party, a chance to win an election, which they haven't done in 12 years now. And, and he might currently be our Prime Minister, if it wasn't for the fact that his younger brother, Ed, beat him to the count. And so David is now over in New York heading International Rescue Committee. Well, that's great. They yes. also have a page cool. where they are helping Ukraine right now. So that's something that you can check out if you just Google International yeah. Rescue yeah. Committee. Yeah. Our loss Dred is your game. Dred, I heard you have exactly 
less than a hundred subscribers on YouTube. Oh no, is that accurate? What happened? No, I've got a hundred and four. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Way to go. Um, and now that I'm back uh, and back for an indefinite amount of time, I'm going to get down to my studio and do my show on the Higgs boson. Oh, Just, let's go. That's that's what I promised my viewers uh, that I was going to produce my first show. So are you going to do that show periodically? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Sweden. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. And, uh, yeah so well, <laughs> you'll have to watch the show to find out. Um, but anyway, you can, you, you can find my stuff at Mind Pirate. That's uh, my YouTube channel. M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. I broadcast this live at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Um, and then my uh, other content uh, is on there, of course. And I'll be doing some more shows. So please uh, check it out. If you like it, subscribe. And uh, yeah, see you there. Guys, I love... I'll go for it. Pirate, oh how are you how are you spelling boson? Is it B O S apostrophe U N? No, B <laughs> no B O S O N. That's that's a but I, I know the the yeah, the, the ship's a, boson. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Bo boson. Yep. That was a sailing. Well, well, that's why I thought it was kind of funny that <laughs> I would I'm dread pirate Higgs, a pirate. Yeah. Uh, and a boson and a boson right yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so, okay yeah, yeah 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 i get it it's all get tying it. together and it's, it, it works better for maritime plans. works better for maritime nations <laughs> yeah <laughs> so right. as a quick recap international rescue committee they have a ukrainian donation page you can check it out just going on google for international rescue committee dread pirate wonderful youtube channel mind pirate p y p y r a t e that's John right. Rich is all over YouTube. You can't not find this guy. That's that's a problem. Once you subscribe to one channel, algorithm just hooks you up with literally everything. Uh, and listen, I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm saying pretty please. I'm saying pretty please. Not a call to action. Larry, what's the coolest thing about suspenders? And could you tell me something about atheism? Because I don't know what it's all about. Oh, the coolest thing about suspenders is being able to hook your thumbs behind them and act like an old Southern preacher. <laughs> um, but my my content if you want to find it online is digitalfreethought.com. Uh, oops, got some problems with audio. Be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. And I have a book, Atheism, What's It All About? that you can also find on Amazon. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com and we'll answer them in future shows. If you're having trouble leaving your religious beliefs behind, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. I highly recommend it. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple, iTunes, Kitcast, Amazon, and good podcasts everywhere. Just look for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye everybody. everybody.